After a relationship with a narcissist, it's not uncommon that our life seems to be in ruins and we have to rebuild our life and that can be really tricky. And at the same time, it's not uncommon to be really upset about what happened and feel that we want some form of revenge or we want some form of closure or we want the other person to be accountable in one shape or form. Today, I'd like to share with you a very simple reframe that helps sort of kill two birds with one stone. On the one hand, really spite the narcissist by actually rebuilding our life. So if we take a step back, we know that in a relationship with a narcissist, they tend to hack away at all the things that we enjoy that make our life healthy. They'll be impacting our sleep, our food, our friends, our hobbies, and our enjoyment in general. Once they're out of our life, we're dealing with a high level of toxicity. In some videos, I talk about the image of a pond. They come into our pond, they've polluted it, they've left, and we're stuck with this pond with various things floating around that should not be there. And sometimes it's a bit demoralizing to try to clean this out. So the first step is to actually understand what is the behavior we should be doing in order to make things better. To illustrate this, I suggest using a very simple graph where you look at elements that can be better and you list simply the behaviors that go in these categories. Some of the things you want to look at is improving your sleep. It's exercising more than you do probably. It's eating real healthy food. So cut away all the industrial food and cook real food. Go to a proper supermarket or market, buy real vegetables and meat and eat nuts and so on and cook real food and cut out anything that's been processed. You also want to look at the friends you hang out with. Hang out with more healthy friends. Spend time reading books. You know what your hobbies are. Spend more time doing the hobbies that you used to enjoy, even if right now you don't enjoy them. Of course, in this case, it can be tough because part of us thinks, I don't know if I deserve it. It's difficult to find the motivation, but that's a separate question. For the time being, all you have to do is write down the different activities that you know would help you. And here I suggest simply separating between the three categories, those that help you a little bit, those that help you mediumly, and those that help you a lot. One of the ones that helps a lot obviously is sleep, high quality sleep, which can be really tough. That's another question. That's a separate issue. The question is, if you do it, does it help you? So on the one hand, we want to look at all of the things that actually will help us do better. Then, on the other hand, we want to look at all the activities which, if we do them, make things worse. And here too, we separate between three different categories. You decide what you put where. In this case, for instance, spending time with screens, spending time on social media, spending time shopping, looking for dopamine hits, spending time with toxic people, using substances, and so on and so forth. Once you have this list, you will know which activities to do more of and which activities, if you did less of them, it would have a better impact. You have to start somewhere. Obviously, you're not gonna be able to do absolutely everything, but if you pick a few activities and you can start with these ones, it starts making a difference. Now, that being said, when you're feeling too lazy, when you don't have the motivation, how do you even do it? Well, this is where we want to tap into the resentment and the anger and use this as a motor. I mention often that anger is a great motivator and a poor strategist. Wanting revenge on the toxic person by destroying the reputation simply means stooping down to their level and wrestling in the mud with a pig. It's unlikely that it's going to work out and it might backfire. Maybe it's the right thing to do. You will decide, but also this means that you're consuming your energy to try to drag other people down. But specifically, we're going to use this because one of the things that toxic people want to do is they want to drag other people down. And if you look at the way the relationship works, you'll probably notice the small snarky comments, the way they demoralized you, demotivated you when you wanted to go out to run, they made a comment, or they tried to prevent you from running because they suddenly had an emergency or they wanted you to spend your money on their hobbies, or they pushed you to drink more, or they tried to separate you from your friends, or they tried to demotivate you so you wouldn't read books. When you wanted to read books, they started being snarky and nasty and trying to get your attention, and so on and so forth. So what I'd like you to do is to visualize a little devil who is looking at you anytime you want to do something positive and is trying to demotivate you. So you think maybe you should go running, and you imagine this devil going, you can't run. You're too lazy. You're too fat. 
you're not going to do it. You're going to stay. You're going to put on weight. You're going to get old and ugly with no energy. And I am going to smirk and I'm going to keep pushing you down because I think it's fun to destroy you. And you're going to look at this devil and you're going to say, screw you. I'm getting up and running just to spite you. I am going to do the various things which I know will make my life better because I know when I do it, you get annoyed. I know that I might not be in the mood for playing music for an hour because I don't feel it inside me. But if I knew that you were sitting watching me do it, that would annoy you so much that I would gain so much pleasure from doing it. I'm not even doing it for the music. I'm doing it to annoy you. I like writing and you always demotivated me. So now I'm going to sit down and I'm going to write even with no inspiration just to see the look on your ugly face. And I hear you telling me, maybe it's time to have a drink. Come on, just one drink. Go ahead. I know you have a drink and then a second one and then you won't be productive. You know what? Screw you. No drinking. I'm not going to have that drink. I hear you and I'm refusing because I know this is going to frustrate you. I know you're trying to push me to stay awake longer, to go onto more Facebook forums and read more things about people in toxic relationships because, you know, as long as I'm doing that, I'm not sleeping. As long as I'm doing that, I'm staying stuck in the past. You know what? Screw you. I'm shutting down my computer, I'm turning off the lights, and I'm going to lie in bed, and if I don't sleep, I don't sleep, but at least I'm not wasting time with screens, because I know I shouldn't be doing this. I'm going to go and buy a book I used to enjoy reading. You would always complain, well, you know what? I'll go and buy this book I've been meaning to read, and even if I can't focus on the book, I will sit there with the book, and I will do it just to spite you. Now, you could say, isn't this a little bit childish? Isn't it something a bit strange about using this negative energy in order to push ourselves forward? Well, maybe, but I care about the result. The result should be that you are making improvements in your life and all these things, they might seem really small, but they count a lot. We have to start somewhere. And if we have this impulse, I could tell you, you shouldn't have it, but if you have it, why not use it for good? And also remember when you do this, you're improving your life. So you're fueling your life. You're fueling yourself with all of the damage that happened before to make things better. If they really could see you, that would spite them to no end because your life would get better. And then they'd think, I lost this person, I actually want them back. But the more your life improves, such as also by not telling lies, by not putting up with BS from people like this, by having solid boundaries, if ever they came knocking back, you would be able to look at them and go, I don't need you. I don't want you. You dragged me down one time. You tried to keep me down, but I rebounded. That's thanks to who I am. You were just a tool to lead me to this. And now that I'm in a place where things are fine, I've even forgotten who you are. You're just a distant memory. And my life right now is so amazing that I have no room for a person like you.